Toastmasters has been an integral part of my public speaking journey. And it's one of the best places to practice this particular skill. But a lot of people, even though they've been a member of this organization for years, haven't seemed to benefit much from it. So if you're considering joining this organization, this video is going to talk about what Toastmasters International is all about, how it exactly works, and whether it's the right fit for you or not. So to start off with, Toastmasters is an international organization started in the USA. It's been around for, I think, almost 100 years. Back in October of 1924, a guy called Ralph Smedley started an organization known as Toastmasters, wherein he would call certain people and practice their public speaking and communication skills. Eventually, the organization started to grow and branching out in different localities. Today, Toastmasters is a global organization with thousands of clubs all across the world, and it's open to anyone. You simply have to pay a certain fee to join as a member. The fees vary from club to club, but it's approximately in the range of 60 to 100 US dollars. And you usually join as a member for a minimum period of six months, after which you can choose to renew your membership or not. Now, as soon as you join, you pick something known as a path, which is basically a route that you will be following in your Toastmasters journey to reach a certain objective. Now, Toastmasters has a lot of paths, and depending on what your objective is, you can pick which one is the best for you. So for instance, if you want to become a more entertaining and funny speaker, you can pick the humorous path. If you want to become a more compelling or persuasive speaker, you can pick the persuasion path. And each path has a certain number of speeches that you need to give in various capacities that help you reach closer to your goal of becoming a humorous or persuasive or inspiring speaker, depending on the path that you've chosen. By the way, if any of this sounds confusing, I'm linking a lot of articles in the description below. And in case you feel you need more information on any of these topics that I'm going to be speaking about, just check out those articles. They go much more in depth into each of these topics. Okay, so you've paid the fee, you've become a member and you've chosen your path. Now you're attending your very first Toastmasters meeting. Just a side note, you don't need to be a member to attend these meetings. You can also attend them as a guest. But anyways, now a Toastmasters meeting is divided into three parts. You first have the prepared speeches, then you have the evaluations, and then you have the table topics. The orders of these might vary from club to club, but that's usually what a meeting consists of. A prepared speech is what it sounds like, when members take out time to practice and prepare for a speech and then come deliver it in front of the club. Each of these prepared speakers is assigned an evaluator, who's mostly a senior member of that club. And they'll basically be hearing your speech and giving you feedback in front of everyone else what you did right, what you did wrong, and what the best way forward for you might be. And finally, you have the table topics. This is an impromptu speech section. There's a moderator and they call on random people from the audience, give them a topic on the spot, and that person is expected to speak on that topic for about a minute to two minutes. Now, if you want to give a speech or become an evaluator for somebody, you simply approach your organizing committee and ask them to book you a spot in any of the upcoming meetings. Now, there's an entire committee that will be doing different different tasks to make sure the club is running smoothly. I'm not going to get into too much of that right now as it might get confusing, but I'm linking an article in the description which describes this entire committee, what the roles are and what each of them accomplish. In Toastmasters, you'll keep progressing as you keep giving more and more speeches. And each speech, depending on the path you've chosen, will have certain objectives that you need to fulfill. In most cases, the speeches can be on any particular topic. And for all speeches, you'll have an evaluator assigned to you, as mentioned earlier. In your entire Toastmasters journey, especially in the beginning, you're assigned a mentor who's again a senior Toastmasters member who will take you through all these things. At the same time, when you're preparing for your speeches, you can also run your entire practice speech by your mentor and they can tell you what you might be doing right, what you might be wrong, even before you go on stage. This is one of the most critical advantages of being in Toastmasters. Having senior people, experienced speakers guide you, especially in your initial days, weeks and months as a public speaker. But what if... Stage fright has gotten to you so much that you just cannot sign up and give a prepared speech. In that case, Toastmasters has a bunch of different, different roles that help run a smooth meeting. These roles are usually people like the moderators who host the meeting or smaller roles such as 
a timer who times all the speeches or a grammarian who makes sure that all the grammar in the speeches is used correctly. These roles are small, but they do allow you to grab some stage time. And until you're confident enough to give an entire speech, you can keep applying for these smaller roles. All of these roles linked in the description below. Check them out if you want to dive deeper into any of them. And that's the long and short of it. Now, there's also a chance for you to practice your leadership skills if you join the organizing committee, because you will have a bunch of responsibilities of running the club and doing different things that help the club move forward. In my opinion, that's never helped me as much as the actual speech giving, but that's just my opinion. So should you join Toastmasters or not? You should join it if any of these reasons are true. You like putting yourself in uncomfortable situations. This is not a place where you learn theories. It's a place where you go and take action. So if you don't mind putting yourself out there in front of people, possibly messing up certain speeches and blanking out on stage, then this is a great point. At the same time, if you prefer something that's more self-paced, because no one's going to force you to give speeches. There are people who've been part of Toastmasters for years and have given just one, two, or maybe three speeches. And that's the main reason they don't progress. But if you're good with keeping yourself accountable, you can choose Toastmasters as a great way to learn in a self-paced manner. And finally, if you like the support of a community, this is a wonderful place to not only find people who will support you in this journey, but also to make some new friends and network. Now, why should you not join Toastmasters? If you're somebody who suffers from scribbling stage fright and you want to ease into the process of public speaking, maybe Toastmasters is not the best place. Instead, you can offer something like one-to-one -one coaching, which is a lot more safer and a lot less intimidating. You should also consider not joining it if you want something that's a lot more personalized and want somebody else to hold you accountable for your progress. This is again where coaching becomes a more viable option than Toastmasters. And finally, you should consider not joining this if you have a very specific or time-bound goal. For instance, if you need to prepare for an important presentation or you need to prepare for an event that you might be hosting soon. In these cases, again, a personalized coach becomes a more viable option as opposed to Toastmasters, which is a longer path towards improvement. We've gone deeper into the topic of the pros and cons of Toastmasters, whether you should join it or not, but you can check out right here.